Oh, yeah. yeah. That and the paper. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. yeah. We are live. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. okay. We're ready. Okay. The meeting will come to order. First item on the agenda is approval of the agenda. I go ahead. We'll go ahead and move that we approve the agenda as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion passes. The Pledge of Allegiance. Ms. Kane, would you please lead us? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I would now like to ask that we take a moment of silence in recognition of Ms. Judy Rutkowski, who passed away um, yesterday, yesterday, last week on Thursday. Um, so we will observe that moment of silence and recognition of Judy. First item here now on the agenda is election of officers because we do have a vacancy in the vice presidential position. I will go ahead and open the nominations and would like to nominate Ms. Reed as our vice president. All right, we have a motion to close the nominations. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. We will go ahead and vote to close nominations. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? I'll abstain. Okay, thank you. Um, so now that nominations are closed, let's go ahead and um, I'll make the motion that uh, we vote to elect Ms. Reed as vice president. Do we have a second? Second. All those in favor of Ms. Reed as vice president, please say aye. 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 And we have an abstention. Are there any opposed? No. All right. Thank you, Ms. Reed. Thank you. You will now be our acting vice president. Thank you. No raise comes here. <laughs> I know. This job, it pays well. <laughs> Next, we have approval of the minutes for September 14th, 2022. That was a business meeting. Uh, are there any questions about the minutes that are included in our board packet? No questions. All right. Um, I will go ahead and move that we approve the minutes as presented. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? That motion passes. Moving on to informational reports, we begin with a summary of current events from Dr. J. Thank you, Madam President, members of the board and guests. Um, we've had quite a few meetings recently, so have a few updates to share with you. Uh, first of all, I, I want to just say um, uh, I'm so saddened by the loss of Judy. Judy spent several several years on the board and uh, very active in our community in our town, and uh, she will be missed. Um, first comment I have is uh, just a high school water update. So just to give everyone an, uh, a little more information, um, last weekend we had a uh, some notice came in that we had a 10 inch water pipe that had busted and was flooding the campus. And uh, after taking a look at that over the weekend, getting um, outside vendors to come take a look, I was determined that the water had to stay off uh, for the rest of the week as it needs to be repaired. And uh, to repair it correctly was gonna take a little bit of time. Uh, so I'm, I'm happy to say that progress is moving forward and John Flynn, our maintenance director, has shared that his, uh, he predicts that it will be done by Friday. And then we have October break coming up after that. We'll do some water testing and make sure everything checks out. And then our hope is to have everything back to normal by Monday when students return. So, uh, so that's an update. We are doing virtual uh, opportunities for our students. We want to make sure that we did not put something in place that would hurt kids over time. So we wanted to 
be able to keep them current, give them an opportunity to get caught up on things that they need to get caught up on, maybe get ahead on some ideas, some things that are, are presented in class. And there will be some assignments that, that they have been assigned either through digitally through PLP, Google Classroom, but then also uh, Krista, Mr. Alexander, and I, and our district staff team, and Kaylee, we all came up and made packets of work as well. So parents who uh, do not have the ability to, to do things digitally could pick up those packets and uh, work off of those. Uh, any parent who also struggles with uh, their, their home, maybe is an area where internet is a little bit tougher. Uh, I know my internet was out the first day my kids were home. <laughs> Uh, and it happened to be a fuse, but uh, that they did not get a lot of work done that day. Um, parents will take parent attendance as well, so a parent can fill out that their student was working and we will accept that. We're going to be very flexible when the kids return on grading those, and I uh, just want to credit the high school administration for uh, working just around the clock, getting after it, having a Zoom meeting very quickly with the staff, pivoting very quickly. We have a lot of experience with this over the last two years, so we were able to pivot pretty quickly. Uh, and uh, Mr. Hartman and I also provided a parent meeting uh, that night that we had to tell everyone it was gonna be closed for the rest of the week on Tuesday. We did a, a parent meeting uh, for anyone who wanted to come and ask questions and just get more information out to our community. So um, we've had uh, really no concerns come in, no questions, so I think everyone understands that it's an emergency. We are going to be bringing to the board a, um, a, a instructional minute template that we're gonna uh, ask for approval down the road that Mr. Alexander and I are working on that will allow us to uh, use these days since we're doing things virtually, kind of the work at home model uh, towards our calendar day so that we would not need to make those days up at the end of the year. So more to come on that, but we'll be excited. We don't have a football game luckily this Friday, it's bye week. <laughs> Or that would have been really challenging, uh, especially if it was rivalry week. We had to play at the rival school, so we caught a few breaks on this, but it should be back up and running soon. Uh, this Friday, we have the McDowell Mountain Elementary School Fun Run, but that was also impacted by this because the Fun Run moved to the high school to use the beautiful track and stadium <laughs> facility. Um, and we could not have uh, 300 children there without bathrooms. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, so that was not going to happen. So we, again, worked with uh, Jelaine, our PTO president, and uh, she's done great work to find an alternative. So it's going to be the MMES Fun Dance Off? Dance Competition? <laughs> Glow Fitness. Glow Fitness. Okay. So it's going to be awesome. And uh, who knows? Maybe it's even more fun and that becomes the thing. So we're, we're going to have fun with it. And uh, so that's coming up this Friday. We had our first strategic planning committee based out of the facility use committee. So that's uh, the facility use committee that was uh, approved by the board. We met uh, with a representative, uh, Sarvanon from Orca Winslow, who designed this, be this beautiful building we're sitting in and uh, talked about uh, opportunities we have as far as um, where we want to go as a district over the next decade, you know, vision planning of what does, what does a portrait of a graduate look like in Fountain Hills? What skills do, do we want graduates to have when they, when they graduate? So this is step one. Uh, there will be lots of uh, surveying going out to the community and taking feedback. And uh, we're gonna take a few field trips of some other sites to see how some schools are done 21st century learning and some collaborative approaches and um, even thematic grade levels is something I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about. So, more to come on that, but I just want to share that that is off and running, and we had a great meeting on our first one. Uh, a PBIS update, the middle school has their new store opening uh, very soon. It is under construction right now, and this is the best part. I had the best meeting I've had as superintendent with our local Girl Scouts uh, uh, troop. They were awesome. They scheduled the meeting with me and Dr. Wheeldryer, and they ran the meeting very efficiently. <laughs> Uh, they were awesome and so they need to do a service project and we came to the agreement that they'll paint uh, and, and, and decorate the new PBIS store so they've already started on that and it looks awesome and we got two display cases donated by Sammy's Fine Jewelers so nice. we're gonna have it's gonna wow. be a little Peter Piper pizza thing going on in there when we're done so <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be great uh, I also met with Junior Achievement 
and uh, Teresa Conti brought that uh, back to, to, to the forefront and had a great meeting with Austin Keating, who is our uh, senior government econ teacher, and Mr. Hartman, our, our principal, about bringing junior achievement back to Fountain Hills High School. Uh, our plan is this year to do the Titan program, is where they build a business, and they go through that business model process, uh, bring the stock market back, which we're the 2018 state champions of, so we want to get back to that. And then a financial literacy program where we're going to bring in business uh, leaders in the community and work with the Chamber of Commerce to come in and guest speak to the kids about what 24% APR on a credit card means and why you might want to look around on those things. So, uh, so we're going to be bringing that back. At the middle school, they're going to get back to uh, the field trips that were taken in the past nice. where you go and... Uh, get opportunities again to learn about the business world and then a long uh, old tradition of um, we're going to bring back the invention convention but in a different way it's going to be uh, through uh, junior achievement and that's like a shark tank where the kids come up with an idea and then they have to get investors so we're very excited about that across uh, the district and then it'll be down at the k3 as well uh, junior achievement will be in all schools uh, i went to average training last week and it was, it was wonderful to sit with other district leaders and share ideas. And our hope is to bring AVID to our middle school in the, in the near future during the academic strategies period to incorporate AVID school-wide. And AVID is a program for uh, students who either A, needed a little extra push to college, or B, someone like me who uh, was a first-generation college graduate. No one in my family had gone to college and I needed that little bit of additional assistance uh, to get there. Uh, last thing I have is uh, Frank made his comeback. Uh, this is our therapy dog, Frank. So at the homecoming parade, normally you put it up on the fancy TVs, but we don't have this tonight. Uh, but Frank did well. He actually, um, he got tired very quickly. So we had to call it a night after about an hour, but he, uh, he's, he's working out right now. He's getting ready for the second semester. So with that, I conclude my comments. Okay, thank you. We'll move on to a governing board reports. We'll start with you, Mr. Zarr. Yeah, I was here this morning for the coffee. And, and you know, it's been 20 years since we opened this, and I was going back in those days and the board. And it was like walking into the future. Uh, no, let me say it again. The past. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, first of all, you look up there. When's the last time you've seen one of those? <laughs> my guess is that it's so heavy no one wants to take it down. <laughs> Um, well, first, I just want to pass on my condolences to the Rakowski family. Um, I had the pleasure of sitting on the board with Judy for the whole eight years that she was here. Um, you know, Judy, Judy had, had a passion for the board. She had a passion for Fountain Hills. You know, she always talked about the fighting flock of Falcon Fury. So um, she, she had been a band parent when her kids were in uh, high school, and she still was a big advocate of our marching band. So... You know, I'm kind of sad that she won't be able to see them march, you know, <clears throat> since they weren't actually marching at the last football game. But um, she also had such a caring heart and, you know, just loved animals and uh, and really, you know, put, put her passion into being a good board member. She was our delegate for almost every ASBA conference, and, and she took pride in that. So I, I just pass on my condolences and that she'll be missed. Um, and then... Uh, Yesterday, I got to go to Dull Knife and El Pueblo, where C.T. Wright, um, who was also a past board member who passed away, uh, they put up a, a street sign, an honorary street sign for Dr. C.T. Wright um, Boulevard or Road or whatever it was, which is where he lived with his beautiful wife, Mary. Um, they had been married 45 years or 54 or something like that. But yesterday would have been CT's 80th birthday. So uh, the town celebrated him and put up that sign. So I just, I've, I've had the pleasure of sitting on, on the board with some great board members and, and I'm sad to see that, you know, the two of them have passed. 
I know. Um, <laughs> see, I gave it to you instead. <laughs> um, yes, I, to everything that Jill said, uh, Rakowski family, um, send our condolences. Um, Jean had a great giggle. Um, <laughs> had never figured out how to hold her iPad up. Um, Made green cookies. She brought cookies. <laughs> um, she did take her time on the board very seriously, and she did love the fighting block of fury, Falcon and Fury. <laughs> Um, and she loved her kids, um, and she will be missed. Um, she had a very kind, kind heart. Um, and um, kudos to the high school staff for pivoting quickly. My kids have actually been busy doing real homework, apparently. <laughs> um, and um, so that's been great. Um, people have been very flexible. Uh, football game last week was good, um, and hopefully well, we get to have our football game next Friday. Okay, that's a big game. I know it's ball break, but everyone who can come out and support our football team, we could really use the support. Um, and I know I'm forgetting something, but I'm going to pass it on to you. Okay. Um, yes, condolences to the Redkowski family and and. Ditto to everything that Jill and Wendy said. Um, Judy just had a massive heart for everybody and, um, you know, cared about people equally and was very concerned about making sure that we had equal opportunity for all of our students, regardless of, you know, their background and, and where they came from and, and um, was very passionate about Fountain Hills and us providing the best quality education that we could to our students. She will definitely be missed. Um, I was also uh, at the dedication for um, CT uh, and it's it's unfortunate that we have now um, had to be on the board with the passing of two <coughs> members who were so passionate about Fountain Hills. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm grateful that the town uh, has acknowledged CT in this way, and I'm glad that we were able to be there yesterday to see that. And that is the end of my remarks. We will move on to reports, starting with a uh, presentation from the PTO. Do, am I fine here? Do you want me? Oh, come on. Kind of, yeah, I'm like, we don't really have... have <laughs> okay, a, <laughs> I know, I know. Like we could we'll roll the cart uh, over. Like, we'll be laughing, Tara. <laughs> We've all been you, Jelaine. <laughs> you can pull a chair forward. Yeah, like yeah, just, just, just make yourself yeah, 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 sit, okay. just pull a chair. Up. Yeah. You're a volunteer. We do not want well, to make I was this. Note that in my presentation. Yes. I know presentation, it's just bullets. Oh, and that's perfect. perfect. There's no <laughs> time to smile. Where's the, where's the camera? Look over there, give a smile and a wink. <laughs> uh, so basically, um, bullet points and notes from current events and upcoming events and uh, tidbits from past events. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar, uh, PTO is a 100% um, volunteer organization. We do have nine executive board members, myself being the 10th, and we hold formal open meetings once a month, and informal meetings in between. We have a lot of conversations that go on via text. Um, we currently have 25 local business par uh, partners and sponsors. You'll find them on our banners labeled out here along the fence line, as well as the bottom of all of our email blasts that go out, um, all sorts of different media content that they get recognition through. Um, also, we have um, coming up, Apex, as Kane mentioned, uh, starts tomorrow. That's preschool, 9.30 in the Mulder Circus Room at Dow Mountain. And then on Friday, we pivoted and adapted, like Apex has taught our students, the A and Apex is adapt. Um, we pivoted to a glow fitness event in the multi-purpose room. Run times are 9.30 and 10.30, and there'll be glow necklaces, it'll be dark blacked out in there, and they'll do 30 different fitness moves. Um, currently, pledge, our pledge level is, I believe, up at around $23,000. So, um, kind of bringing them some funds there and hoping to round that up. 
tomorrow as we finish those pledges. Uh, followed up with um, that, we picked up a little bit of a new initiative down at McDowell Mountain and um, pledged that we will help re, and not really reinvent, but redesign a little bit of the front entrance out at McDowell. We'd like to, as a PTO initiative, make it a little bit more um, kid-friendly and a pop-up color. So we proposed that we would like to paint the front orbs at the front of the doors, those big three concrete security orbs, the bright blue falcon um, color, and then the, the doors, again, bright falcon blue. Hang some pennant banners, new banners along Fayette that will recognize rec um, that registration is open. Um, new parking signs for carpool drop-off. I think we allotted 71,000 over there to try to redo a little bit of that, a little mini facelift until we start a progress over here. Um, after that, we have the um, special needs garden. We're going to focus on Make a Difference Day. That's October 22nd, happening on the high school campus. That registration is being run through Make a Difference Day with the community center and um, the town of Fountain Hill. We will be there 8 to 12 on that Saturday. Um, lots of fun things we're going to do over there. A little bit of a zen. Um, we're going to redo the arbor, put some uh, wildflowers in. We ordered a bistro set for over there. We'll get the swings installed. So anybody that would like to volunteer with that event, we recommend that you go to Make a Difference Day online and sign up. And then just note that you want to help out the PTO at the high school. Right after that, we are going to be participating here in Red Ribbon Week with a little bit of the help there with Dr. Bill Dreyer and um, the Fountain Hills um, Anti-Drug Coalition. So we're going to do a little bit of the health um, benefit and give away free water and trinkets, pencils, pens, let the kids kind of um, be spoiled a little bit that day. And that day is also our, um, no, earlier that week is our kickoff for the total day of awesomeness. It's a fundraiser we're going to pick up here at the middle school. We have not done a large fundraiser here at the middle school like Apex in my time with the board. So we figured it was time to get the middle schoolers back on some sort of um, activity fundraising event up here at the middle school. And we've also picked up a little bit of a staff appreciation event once a month. The um, staff is partaking in a radio light, name that tune, guessing game. And the staff can do whatever they want with it, but we've decided to provide $25 gift cards once a month to help the staff play fun games and part of their announcements, and it's been fun from what I'm hearing and receiving <laughs> lots of good support, so we'll take that good morale and run with it. Um, after that, we do have the holiday pop-up shop returning at both the middle school and the Bell Mountain, December 5th through 9th. Both sites will run concurrently. And then, the largest announcement probably is our new annual spring fundraiser is a 5K and fun run. Instead of doing a gala event that really has such limited audience and limited draw, we thought we would open it up community, but really county and statewide. Anybody can come to the high school campus and run the 5K as a PTO fundraiser. So we're working on getting that website launched, um, getting all of our assets put together for marketing and advertising. And then we partnered with the Booster Club on um, our theme this year, well, pretty much every year, it's been feathers and flapjacks. So the Boosters is going to host a pancake breakfast in the high school cafeteria following the run. And um, they can kind of segue right off of our fundraiser into one of their own um, by serving pancake sausage, juice, and water. And then those funds would go to the Booster Club. After that, we have the book fair, March 5th through 10th. Again, concurrently, both at the middle school and McDowell run Mountain running at the same time. So to go along with the fun run, we are, or the um, 5K, we are seeking local sponsors at $250. They would get their own recognition on the back of the 5K t-shirt. So um, that's being advertised out on our website right now as well. And we are running a contest for the t-shirt. We put it out to um, Marissa Cullen at the high school as an art contest. Any student that might want to partake in it can design the front logo illustration. Uh, for the Fountain Hills 5K. Feathers and flatjacks. 
We gave them until the 12th of, of the deadline for that, and we'll be picking the winner from that. And registration will be starting soon, soon on the 5K. We just don't have everything in order to get registration started, but we'll let everybody know when that's up and ready to go. And that's it, unless anybody has questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for all you do. We appreciate it. You're welcome. It is our pleasure. Okay. And now we get to go to district celebrations. It looks like uh, the first on the list here, are we starting with the high school mm -hmm. this evening? All right. Come on up. It, he's he, he's going to make you. <laughs> I'm going to do it this one because it's okay. a little bit special to me. I see. And then um, he'll be on the spot for the next one. Okay. okay. <laughs> so take notes. Yes. <laughs> Every day. <laughs> All right. So this one is for our staff member. Um, we struck gold when we found Lily. She was so excited to be part of Fountain Hill. She came in last year to help us. She was already invested in our community here. She assisted as Evelyn and I met with students. She helped us celebrate our seniors at graduation. She even reviewed every single transcript. Uh, so she knew all she could about every student before they started the new school year. It's been said, the only way to do great work is to love what you do. Lily does just that. She, walk, she walks into each day with an open heart and an open mind, ready to take on any and all challenges that may come her way. She runs the counseling department single-handedly for them. She tirelessly works for our students and families as an advocate and offers them all the support and mentors our students. We can't imagine our school without her. As previously mentioned, we struck gold with Lily Simpson. school. Thank you. 
of elementary, which is awesome. I was smoking so I couldn't make it tonight. So I will start with uh, staff. I'm going to go over here. So I can be like the old man. <laughs> uh, so the uh, McDowell Mound uh, has selected Sophie Dory. Come on up, Sophie. Come on up first. First year on. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
already known as Design Customer Service. She's innovative in her, and, and dedicated to her work. She communicates with our staff to ensure they understand the vast realm of HR while finding time to build new programs and initiatives. Hey, we've collaboratively worked with Alicia and Payroll to create an employee portal where staff can now view their contract, pay stubs, time off, submit EPAR. She's also created an employee spotlight program, which we had Melissa here last, last meeting, to celebrate our employees' amazing work. She's updated TalentEd, our evaluation tool, to be more user-friendly and effective. Additionally, Kaylee has worked diligently to build relationships with university, job organizations, and marketing companies to build our pool of applicants. We appreciate Kaylee's approach, uh, but her to her uh, procedure-driven approach to HR, she is a great coworker and has brought positivity and stability to our district. So Kaylee, I'm so proud. that were recognized tonight, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the board meeting, but if you would rather not, you are also free to go. <laughs> Get up early for school tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> and she's been too patient. So yes. Yeah. <laughs> I think we need to start with Phyllis. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for being so patient. Yes. <laughs> your next fundraiser coming yeah. up.
Are you doing any type of food drive for Thanksgiving for the um, food bank or? That's, that's, uh, we haven't spoken food drive. That's more of an NHS that we would normally okay. drive. We are just with more of the activities the students to be at the school. So, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, main, the main money that we're getting for uh, everything to be done is the parking spaces right now. It's the, uh, it's the seniors because that's the activity. And how much is that for the students to paint a parking space? But if you pay the extra, the yeah. premium, then yeah. you can do it as a junior. junior yeah. Crafty. <laughs> <laughs> What movie are you going to show? Do you know? I think we're going to do Scooby-Doo live action. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you picked that part. <laughs> 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 but if people like it, it was right. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Overall, it's going to be good outlook for this year. Yeah. Great. All right. Well, we really appreciate you coming tonight and sharing that update with us. We always love having Stu go here and sharing what's going on at the high school. So. Thank you so much, and feel free to enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tyler Moore from True Professionals, who's been our consultant, uh, doing an amazing job of helping us with our finances. He's here tonight to present our annual financial report. So, thank you. Yes. yes. That's, our, that's our official uh, podium,
slide from there, you have administration to support uh, transportation, food service, and construction support. And what those are, uh, those are various categories in which um, every expenditure is accounted for, and so we use various account codes um, to classify those in those categories. And so um, without a staff on, on board, it, it takes time to reconcile those in much the possible of the board reports in terms of the annual reports, uh, taking time to, to come up to those. Um, yeah, so it's the snapshot of that, um, looking a little deeper into it, um, there's, there's basically two main funds for a school district. You have budgeted funds, those are funds budgeted by the state, um, those are budget controlled by your ADM, average change of membership. And so your main ones are going to be fund 001, which is your m and maintenance and operations fund. Um, that can be used for anything supplies, services related, and of course your staff and benefits. Uh, your second main budget fund is your capital, your 610. Um, that, that, that can be used for things. If you're, if you're purchasing equipment, um, anything physical, like modifications to building, building improvement, uh, land improvement, um, that is how that fund, that is that fund. Both of those are generated by a formula, um, and basically it take your ADM times the number, and that's how that, fund, that number is generated. Your other budget funds are your grants. Um, you have several grants that uh, your district has Um, I didn't showcase those because there is a number of them, um, but those are also budget driven. So what the graph indicates there is your last uh, four fiscal years um, of annual spend. Um, and so it's pre pretty flat um, over the course of the last four fiscal years. Um, what the district will have to start addressing um, as the ADM declines or goes up um, some of the annual spending. Um, I'll show you in a later slide your, your average ADM. Um, but you, it's formula generated, and so it, it, one part of the formula is going lower. Um, the district needs to take a look and modify spending accordingly. But overall, um, relatively flat for the last four fiscal years. Um, looking at some of your budget balances, so that was budget expenditures. Um, again, same funds. Um, again, not, not looking at grants. Grants can be quite long. Um, but this report will be up on a Uh, your budget, budget control, um, your budget balances, and so what you'll see in the report, there's a formula that shows two numbers. It shows, it'll show a cash um, number. You cannot spend cash. You, your your M&L and capital are generated by budget. And so if you have excess cash, what you do is you work with the Maricopa County Superintendent's Office to adjust your tax rate accordingly to kind of true that up. It fluctuates year to year, um, but it, that's the nature of or our current year funding, and so you have to basically predict um, your ADM, and then um, the Maricopa County Superintendent's Office sets the tax rate based on that prediction. And so if you fluctuate anywhere up and down, you're going to have fluctuations in your cash balances. And so every year it's an annual process in which we adjust those. What I'm showing here is your budget balance, so this is actual budget capacity that you've carried over year after year. Uh, fiscal year 21 and your MNO fund was um, just over 800 um, that is there's relatively a good number, um, a conservative number that, that most districts utilize, between four to eight um, percent. Over the last couple of years, several districts have carried over a lot larger because of unknowns um, with, with COVID and other variables. Um, I've seen anywhere from ten to twelve percent. But generally, this is a safe, uh, conservative number that that is well within reason. And fiscal year twenty two, which is this fiscal year just ending. Uh, that should carry over just over six hundred eighty thousand. Uh, in capital, uh, your capital kind of accrued over the course of the two last two years. Um, this could be for a number of reasons. Um, in turnover in the finance department, um, you know, a note came in for Dr. Dave working on a capital plan and looking at addressing some of and, and allocating these dollars for, for fiscal reasons. Um, but this is actually, um, I think, a blessing in disguise, and consider, considering we have. Town bill is going after a bond election. Um, you know, that is contingent on voter approval. Um, if that were to fail, this would be your allocation, which you would have to address um, any sort of building modifications that you're doing. I know you've talked consolidation, um, but this, this this would be it. And you can see that's not a lot of money. That's not going to take you very far. Um, but that is the reality of, of what you have available. So 
he calls me, he calls me. Tyler, can I just clarify a point of clarification? Yeah. Those individual numbers are uh, building upon themselves. It's not individual. Like 150. So these, these, are, these are the last. They're the compounded years. numbers. Yeah. So these are so after so fiscal 2019. That was your aging cash balance. Yes. Yeah. And then so fiscal 21 takes the revenue and expenditures that you recruit in fiscal 20, and then that's your aging cash balance. Okay. I I just want to make sure people don't think that that's what we're getting. Year it is <laughs> what's carrying over. Yeah, basically. that's correct. That's your okay. aging balance after each fiscal year. So it, you are one, you know, putting in seven years in revenue. It's, yeah. it's, it's evident and flowing. And the last one there, indirect costs, um, that, that's generated by grants. Um, by grants, and so um, you know, whether each district could choose to, to draw down indirect, that's just the choice of your district. And so, um, yeah, and so that's the scope of the advice. So that, that tells me that you're. Was really good. That was really yeah. yeah that was a great yeah. presentation, uh, and we appreciate that you're you're doing this. <laughs> yes, thank you for all the time. <laughs> School finance isn't the easiest thing, so that you've taken it on, you know, it. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that. So obviously, we're still looking for a director of finance, but it's nice to have someone that we can rely on so. with yeah. the expertise. Yeah. Yeah. Your resume okay. is getting better all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of experience here. Uh, I um, just.
just wanted to thank you for also, um, you know, calling out and kind of um, sharing with the audience. Um, as board members, we get to hear a lot of these presentations, and so we learn. We're still not school finance experts by any means because you can get like a degree in school finance in Arizona, um, and we are not that far along. But I think that um, many times uh, individuals, there's the tax rate that the school district is taxing the residents in our community so that we can continue to have a balanced budget. So we don't have unlimited opportunity to have funding for schools, which is why we have to go out for overrides if we need more money than what the state is originally designating for us. Correct, yeah, the school board or the district arbitrarily sets the tax rate. The tax rate is, um, is, is, is that the is that formula that and work with the county to return the tax? Yeah. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Mr. Um, any uh, issues with our revenue control limits? Uh, your, your, your RTL? No, um, no issues there. The, the, the main issue, and, and, and most of you should be aware of this, is the um, uh, aggregate expense limit. Um, I, didn't, I, didn't, I don't know off the top of my head, but that, that I think is the tune of about 16%. And so when you look at um, your budget balance, um, so that if that does not get so that, that, for the audience or anybody who's not familiar, the aggregate expense limit is a, is a 1983 statutory um, formula um, that tells basically school districts um, uh, basically how much budget they can spend. Um, they take the cumulative, they take all the districts in the state, put that in a, in a total, um, times it by a, a certain percentage, and it pops out a number of what they can spend. And so we, the Arizona school districts have met that uh, cumulative spend. Um, and so, like last year, we, we are now exceeding that limit by 1.3 billion uh, as a whole. And so, what that means for Town Hills is going to be roughly 16% uh, of the budget that they would have to redo if that aggregate expense limit is not um, exempted by the legislature. Um, you can see that that is not um, a lot of money. When you're carrying over almost 680,000, um, 16% of the budget is 1.6 billion. Um, that is just So the, the, that is the main concern for, for all school districts in the state right now. Um, that being the example of the legislation by the deadline of March 1st this year, um, because that has that has major budgetary implications, not only to, to the district, but your staff and the well-being of the district. So. And they wanted to pass it at the 11th hour the last time, so that they, you know, the, we didn't even know until it, it got really close to the deadline, and then they finally extended it. Yeah, I have, a, I have a peer that looked through the, uh, looked at this on-cycle election and the, the chain of um, representation in the legislature that they came to an agreement that had a contentious, uh, uh, basically contentious um, topic and then they decided to make that not if, if it's exempted or not, so. Okay. Did you have it, it, it's contacts, similar to our open rights, actually, because yes. uh, Every year, the legislature has to look at that and make a decision whether or not they're going to exempt it again or not, just as we do every five or seven years. When it comes to our overrides, the taxpayers make that decision for us. Correct. This is far greater than what we're talking about yeah, the overrides. Is, yeah, fortunately, this is out of any of those things. You can't get this to the voters. This is a, it's a legislative um, implication. So um, that, is, that is, I think, this is just the leadership and my district. Thank you so much. Come up again. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Welcome back. So the, the second report I have tonight is um, a bond and override report for fiscal year 22. Um, this report is required. It's also 
do our best fashion. Um, this is uh, a basic report out. If, if your district has a um, MO override, which, which you do, and or a bond, um, you're required to pull, uh, report out um, those expenditures um, in the prior fiscal year and any um, um, budget implications that you have going forward. And so, Dr. Uh, Mills does have an MO override that was approved um, last November. Um, they also have small bit of bond funds from the 2013 authorization. So I'll be, I'll be showing out both of those. Tyler, just for the audience, this has nothing to do with the upcoming bond and overrides. So Correct. just so everyone's on the same page, that this is stuff that's already approved and has been in place. So it has nothing to do with what we're looking for in the future. Correct. It's from the 2013 authorization. And just a, a historical report out. Like I mentioned, the, the district had a uh, MRO override the last uh, election cycle, so in November, um, that was approved. Um, uh, that 50% uh, uh, maintenance operations override um, included increased funding for the following programs here, maintaining all day kindergarten, uh, providing teacher salary increases, providing professional development, hiring additional staff, leading and literature, financially rewarding staff for outstanding performances, um, which enables the district Um, while these while these monies are not designated in each of those categories when, when you get the uh, allocation from the state, um, the district um, does its best to account for each of those in those particular areas. And so this is a um, a rough estimate of what those uh, expenditures kind of went to for the fiscal year, uh, last fiscal year. Um, what I do know is that total override amount was 1.2 million uh, for the district, which is huge. Um, that provides a lot of support um, in these areas. Maintain and sustain um, these areas. So, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail. Like I said, the, the, how that revenue comes into the city is just on top of your budgetary amounts. And so, um, like I said, the district, um, with the turnover of the financial department, has accounted for all these monies. Um, and so, this is kind of just a representation um, of how that. Again, so the, this is the historical look back of your prior bond. Um, it was voter approved back in 2013. That was an $8 million bond. It was approved for the following categories safety and security upgrades, renovations and improvements for existing buildings, site and athletic facility improvements, public transportation, um, and some administrative safety and security upgrades, and building renovations. Um, that is pretty much all um, spent. Um, there is approximately one point Under reports, we also have student activity and auxiliary accounts on pages 41 through 49. The unaudited financial report is on pages 50 through 52. Site council minutes are on pages 53 to 57. And then current enrollment and withdrawal on pages 58 through 59. Any comments or questions? Mm -hmm. I will say that I believe it was for both the um, middle 
middle school site council minutes and the high school site council minutes um, that I believe I saw that um, there's improvement in discipline referrals um, and that uh, like, it looks like it's steady improvement since the, the beginning of the school year. I'm very glad to hear that. I'm hoping that has um, a reflection because of you know PBIS and all of the things that all of the staff are doing across all of our sites to help our students stay engaged in the classroom and focused on learning that's resulting in um, fewer disciplinary referrals. So that's wonderful. And downward trend in absenteeism. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Good to see our kids back in school and not not home or on virtual. Yes, except for when you have pipes break. But well, there's <laughs> no. <laughs> keeping them there's on there's nothing we can do about that. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. so. laughs> All right, um, do we have any public comments this evening? Okay, moving on to the consent agenda, which consists of the personnel action report on page 60 through 60, 61 through 63, payroll vouchers are 64 to 68, accounts payable vouchers 69, through 84, donations 85 through 90, and then purchases over 100,000. We have uh, a number of um, pages, that's 91 through 157 because we have a lot of supplemental documentation so we can see the um, expenditures over the past year um, to provide justification for why um, we have a number of um, POs that we authorize for over 100,000. I think some of these are kind of self-explanatory like Salt River Project and EPCOR Water. Um, as a district, yes, we spend over $100,000 on uh, our major utilities throughout a school year. Um, some of these other ones associated with um, CDW, Backbone Communication, Milestone Computer Technology, which is you know software, equipment like Chromebooks, et cetera. Um, if anybody has any questions about any of those, um, I'm sure that Dr. J can help to answer those or possibly even Tyler. Um, that's all I have to say about the consent agenda. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Nope, but I certainly appreciate seeing anything over $100,000 because you know how I feel about procurement. Yes. <laughs> Our electric bill, $388,000 last year. Okay, if there aren't any additional questions or comments, I will go ahead and move that we approve the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Okay, the motion passes. We move to action items, starting with policy advisories 716, 717 through 720, and then 722 through 736. These are the uh, policy advisories that we have now discussed a couple times because we um, did an initial reading of those in our last business meeting and then in our last work study session last week, um, we looked at those advisories in a little more detail. We pulled out any of the regulations and exhibits that we wanted to um, do some wordsmithing on and we'll touch on those in our next work study session at the end of this month. So the policy advisories that are included here are the ones that we said that we were, um, previously said we were okay with moving forward on. Um, some of those are because they are uh, required policies and, and we're not going to amend them. Some of them are regulations or exhibits that we were comfortable keeping as presented. Um, any additional questions or comments on those? Um, I will call out that since the last meeting, it was actually the uh, night before our last meeting, um, there was a change, um, I believe it was a change in the legislature, which then prompted a change in one of the policies. So if you look at the um, board packet page 158, um, JLCB was one that we discussed in the last meeting associated with the vaccinations. Oh yeah. And that's been updated um, since our last meeting. So those uh, are being readdressed tonight later in the agenda. Okay. Uh, so that's not included as part of this particular action item for us to approve, which was one of the ones that we had previously discussed that we were planning to approve tonight. Okay. So just wanted to make that clarification. So with that said, um, I will go ahead and move that we 
approve policy advisory 716 uh, and any associated regulations and exhibits, policy advisories 717 through 736, um, and then policy advisories 721 through 723, 724 through 732, and 735. I believe those are all the ones listed here. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? The motion passes. Our next action item is the annual financial report, which obviously we just had presented to us. Um, does anybody have any additional questions or comments on that before we move for its approval? No, I think it was really a great presentation. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right, do we have a motion? I move that the board approve the annual financial report. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor of approving the annual financial report as presented, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? That motion passes. The next item for action is the superintendent goals, which we had the opportunity to review and discuss in the last board meeting. Uh, any additional questions or comments this evening? Doesn't sound like it. I think they're great goals, and, mm -hmm. and it's a great starting point for, for Dr. J and, and the board. And so, um, as we discussed next year, we may see you know a little bit more measurable goals. But for right now, I, I believe these are great to create a baseline. Okay. Great. Excellent. I will go ahead and move that we approve the superintendent's goals for 2022-2023. Second. All right. All those in favor of the motion on the table, please say aye. 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 Are there any opposed? That wraps up our last action item for this evening. We just have a couple information and discussion items here, starting first with the board self-evaluation. Um, I don't know that this is so much a discussion item, but more like a public uh, um, notification that uh, the board does go through a self-evaluation annually. We will be starting that self-evaluation process this evening um, per our board packet. Now I gotta get to that page. Um, we need to get our um, self-evaluation instrument completed and over to Krista by Monday, October 17th. Um, she will compile all of our um, results and then um, those will be shared with the board so that we can uh, review and discuss. <coughs> Krista, can you send that to the board again sure. electronically where we can just fill yep. it in? We sure will. Thank you. Yeah, that works. That and as Judy well. would tell you, we are one of the only districts that ever does this. <laughs> Every year. <laughs> Every year. Yeah. And, and thank you for updating it where we have the comments under each of the um, sections. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Much easier. The next uh, information discussion item is that policy advisory that's been revamped. So this is technically our first reading of the revamped uh, advisory uh, 737 to 738. This overhauls the JLCD policy and regulation to conform to the Arizona Department of Health regulations and Arizona statute. Um, so this policy advisory makes some adjustments to the wording regarding immunizations. Um, it strikes out uh, detail related to immunization required for attendance and uh, immunization not required for attendance. It indicates that for a list of immunizations required for attendance and immunizations specifically not required for attendance to see the regulation. Uh, and then the regulation itself um, provides a statement that says, however, schools may not require immunization for COVID-19 or any variant of COVID-19 unless the immunization is first prescribed by rule adopted pursuant to ARS 36-672A. Finally, schools may not require any resident of this state to receive the COVID-19 immunization or any vari variant of the COVID-19 immunization. See ARS 36-685. Just checking to see there's also um, some additional guidance to administrators 
records unavailable or insufficient, there was some added language around um, time of enrollment or the documentation requirements are not met pursuant to AAC R9-6-705A1. Um, the school shall provide the parent or guardian with the following written notification. Um, there's some other details here about notification and written notification that the school district might provide. There's also an additional statement here about outbreaks in student attendance. Students who lack documentary proof of the required immunizations, regardless of exemption status, may not attend school during outbreak periods of communicable immunization preventable diseases as determined by the Department of Health Services or local health department. I think that is the majority of the additions to this. Uh, there is a section down here about superintendent's annual report, and there's some added language regarding uh, an immunization record. This is not added, this, this was there before. An immunization record shall be maintained for each student. Um, that record shall include the following information, and the added language was the date, day, month, and year each required vaccine dose was received, uh, laboratory evidence of immunity, if this evidence is presented as part of a pupil's documentary proof, if an exemption from immunization as provided in section 15-873 is submitted to the school administrator, the date the exemption is submitted, and the reason for exemption, uh, and there's also a section here on records on request. A school shall transfer an immunization record with the mandatory permanent student record and provide at no charge on request a copy of the immunization record to the parent or guardian of the pupil. Uh, we do have also public's right to know freedom of information, KDB-R. Um, there was some added language to this. As required by law, the public record request point of contact is listed below and will be published on the district website, uh, name of employee or department. The above stated employee department shall reply within five business days acknowledging receipt of the request if the district utilizes an online portal for submission of public records requests. Sorry. If the district utilizes an online portal for submission of public records requests, a receipt will be delivered upon submission. Um, so that is a separate regulation, the, the public's right to know freedom of information. The purpose in updating this was to make it more um, transparent uh, who at a given district, either an employee or department, is the point of contact for any records requests. So those are the, the two regulations. Um, does anybody have any Obviously, this is a first reading. It is an action item tonight. Um, I'm just curious to get a gauge from the board if there's anything that we feel we would want to um, have further discussion regarding uh, the regulations here in our upcoming meeting on uh, later in October when we work on any of those other regulations, or do we feel like these will likely be okay as presented? I have a question about yeah. this. So. Um, the, the new added language, which is the above stated employee, your department shall reply within five business days acknowledging receipt of the request. Um, how, is the, how does that work right now? I mean, I would, five business days if someone, Christy, can never go on vacation. Like, how do we, <laughs> how do we ensure that there's a person in backup and um, so for those records requests? Yeah. yeah, so we respond in that time, but then we have time to gather it. So. Yeah. So some will have to you know, put a backup in place to make sure that. Well, you always have an out of office reply. Like, like next week I'll be gone. So okay. I'll have a, and I'll have a, a, a backup email for people to send things to. Okay. Yeah. So, we, so. If, as long as we're clear then in that um, the automatic reply that if it's a records request, we can contact this person mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah. we're going to be okay. Okay. I just five business. I mean, I think that we should. Um, you know, respond in a timely manner, but I, I there's usually, also times when yeah, it's usually within 24 hours yeah. to, well, to I don't let them know that I'm on vacation. vacation. I'm not. <laughs> okay. Okay. I likely That's will be off the grid, so. Okay. That's true, you are in the middle of the woods, but I do want to make sure that people don't feel obligated when they're out of the office for sickness or vacation mm -hmm. or something yeah. like that.
was there any other questions or comments about these um, regulations as part of this first reading? Um, just on the immunization, right? Like just reading it over and over again, it, it's like you can't require this, but if you require it, then you have to notify the parent, but you're not allowed, allowed to, require to require it. it. It's like the circular language is a bit uh, redundant and also confusing. Right. <laughs> I mean, literally, a school district or charter school as a government entity that requires a person under 18 years of age to receive a vaccination for COVID or any variant of COVID must obtain the consent of that person's parent or guardian. However, schools may not require <laughs> immunization for COVID or any variant of COVID. Like, why don't we just leave it at that and not have all of the yeah, I think we need. I, I think we should pull that and, okay. and just, I, I would like to see that reworded because that's, I mean, it, it literally makes your brain spin. Okay, so Krista, can we include that one for our discussion? Is that JLCB? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Just the regulation. Yeah. Okay. Policy's policy, but the regulation just makes my head spin. <clears throat> So that was our last information discussion item. Future action, if you would like to see an item on a future board agenda, please reach out to Krista. Dates of upcoming meetings, we have our exciting work study session, October 26th at 5 p.m. Uh, in the Learning Center so that we can talk about all these regulations and exhibits, and I'm sure we'll have some uh, other items to discuss at that time as well. And then Wednesday, November 9th, 2022 is a business meeting at 6 p.m. That is our one and only business meeting for, or meeting really at all, unless we decide we need an additional work study session um, for the month of November. Uh, and with that, I move that we adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? No, meeting adjourned. Yes. <laughs>